Hey, it's Noelle Bloom here and welcome to Bloom TV. You're in the right place if you wanna create a business that makes a difference and live a fabulous life. Do you find that you experience overwhelm more than you do happiness and joy? You know, for many of us entrepreneurs, we are ambitious, we are high achievers, and we have big plans for our work in the world, oftentimes with a mile long to-do list, and we're extremely hardworking. And if we're not careful, we can find ourselves living in a state of overwhelm that robs us from our joy in life. So if you've been feeling that pressure to get things done, to be a high performer, and to just knock things off your to-do list, then this episode is for you. I'm going to sit down and talk with a very special guest, and her name is Jody Amen. She is an intuitive counselor for over 20 years, and she's the author of the best-selling book, You Won, Anxiety Zero, Win Your Life Back from Fear and Panic. And she helps hardworking women get clarity, expand their consciousness, and live with vitality to ultimately live a happier life. And she's going to share a very simple strategy that you can implement today to help you feel better and, and experience a sense of happiness. So if you're ready to alleviate some of that pressure that you put on yourself daily, you're going to love this episode. I'd love for you to join us in this conversation as we talk about a very simple, happy hack that works every single time. So let's dive in. Jody. thank you so much for joining me on Bloom TV. I've been really looking forward to having this conversation because I know many entrepreneurs struggle with feeling overwhelmed. They are overworked and many times exhausted. And you're the queen of helping hardworking women live happier lives. So I'm so excited to have you today. Thanks so much. Yay. So I'd love to start off by asking you, um, how did you start your business and why? Well, I really started my business as a psychotherapist. So I've been working with women and couples and children for uh, 20 years. But I realized that there's same kind of problems people had over and over. And so I thought I really want to write a book and start speaking because I'll impact more people than I could for one hour, eight times a day. I really wanted to get this message out. And at the same time, a lot of my clients were like, you need to write this down in a book because they knew I had something. When they came and listened to me talk, they were like, wow, it was like such aha moments. And I'm like, I got to put this out there. And so that's what I did. I've been blogging uh, for about 10 years now and I'm a YouTuber. And so just getting out, like just really helping people break down, you know, how they think and why they think that way and how to choose to be happier, uh, how to feel better, how to get rid of their fear. Uh, my first book was on anxiety. You want anxiety zero. So I help people because that is such a huge problem with everybody. That's a major barrier to, barrier to our happiness is fear. Yeah. And anxiety, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've felt that way many times. I think just running a business, there is so much anxiety that many people don't acknowledge and there's there's been some big online people who are running businesses very very successful people who have opened up in recent years and talked about how much stress and anxiety they feel and how they actually overcome it so i love that more and more people are having this conversation because at times you can kind of feel like you're going through it alone and when there are people who step out and say hey i've i've struggled with this this is how i've been able to manage it i think it just helps all around. So usually, so with your clients or people that you work with, or maybe just hardworking women in general, what type of lives are they living and how do you actually help them overcome, maybe not just anxiety, but, you know, have, helping them bring more um, awareness to their happiness and their needs and, and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, as women, I mean, we're taking care of our heart's desire, like our business, like something that we just have passion and we want to bring out there, our creativity. And then we have children often, and often we're taking care of our parents too. You know, we're in this really middle place in our life. 
Uh, and that happens at all ages. Sometimes in your 20s, you start taking care of your parents. Sometimes in your 30s, sometimes in your 40s. Um, and so it's, it's really striking all of us and um, that there's just so many people. Then our, our spouses or our partners, like we're taking care of so many people. And, and then we have all these messages like take care of yourself. Like you make sure you're caring for yourself too. And then there's all these like charities out there and, and other things that we, you know, as business people, we want to support. There was a whole thread I was reading this morning about all these things people did for their communities. Um, we're giving, 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 giving. And it's beautiful and it's yeah. wonderful. And sometimes we can't celebrate that because we're so busy, like beating ourselves up because we're not doing enough or we're not taking care of ourselves, or we're letting something slide or whatever it is that we're judging. Our house is a mess. Yeah. And I, I just want to be like, ah, everyone take a breath. You yeah. are beautiful. You are amazing. Every single <laughs> thing you do is amazing, but they don't honor what they do. You know, yeah. they just see what they haven't done yet. Yeah. And, and I think it's easy for us to get caught into that place. And I know many people who are watching have given to that point to where they are physically, emotionally, um, and just mentally drained and exhausted because we give, 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 give. And so um, I think bringing that awareness to looking at those small things, which we're going to talk about in a minute, but, but really taking the time to not just focus on what you haven't got done, right, or what you didn't, what you didn't do paying too much attention to that and not what you you've actually accomplished can just shift your mindset and really shift the the way you feel about your life and what you're doing and your work. So I love that perspective that you have. Yeah, absolutely. So, so many times like our day gets away with us. I heard so many women saying that, you know, my day is like not my own or, you know, it's like the agenda is everybody else's agenda. And so number one is we got, we get really intentional about our day and what's the most important to us in our day. And so that's that morning routine when we're really focused on, okay, what do we really want out of today? And that connection to spirit or connection to your higher self, or just being quiet for a moment. And, um, and then, um, and then, yeah, what you said about later on in the day, like we can control what we give attention to. Mm. And there's a lot clamoring for that attention. There is so much. And, and some of it's negative. You know, that, that negative self-judgment that we do all the time, that is just beacon for our attention because it sounds so real and important and we've got to do something about it. And it's like, ah. And, um, but there's all these other things that we could give our attention to that will totally change our day. And it won't make us less productive and it won't make us less there for other people. It is going to make you more there for other people. It's going to make you more productive and happier at the same time. So it's like win, win, win. Why not do it? Yeah. And I, I love that you brought that up because many people think that there's a trade-off, right? Yes. Between slowing down and actually taking that time for ourselves or taking time to really enjoy what's going on in the moment, just slowing down to kind of speed up. And I've heard many people say that if I were to slow down, if I were to take a break, it will slow me down. Then my results will decrease the, you know, um, the outcomes are not going to come. Or if I don't push, 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 I have to, I have to push, push, push to get the result. And so what I always like to tell people is that when you actually take the time to slow down and, um, it, it just gives you more creativity. You have more space to create just that mental clarity from you not doing, doing, doing. And I know many times for me, like we were talking about before, um, just feeling for me, feeling overwhelmed this week, I went out to the country and I just drove and I, I love to drive and just the feeling of movement, you know, on the freeway or on open roads has always felt good to me. And I just drove to the country, got out of my car and I uh, just felt the wind and listened to the birds and that's oh, beautiful. Just, well, yeah, just, I can see you. I can see you doing that. It's just like, you're like, ah, oh, like just bringing it all in, you know, bathing in the nature. Yeah. Yeah. And, and just feel, just feeling that the, the sun on my skin. And mm. even though I had a lot of stuff to do, just, you know, a lot of calls to make and emails to send and, and things like that. I still took that time for myself. And when I approached my work, I just felt so much better. I had a clear mind and I felt like I gave myself that gift of space. Yeah. So, it's yeah, like, I, these 10 minutes in and you get a couple hours back because listen, we waste so much time in that worry and in that self-judgment. Like I got to do this. I didn't do that yet. I got to do that. Oh my God. How am I going to do that? When am I going to do that? That takes a lot of time and energy. 
And if you eliminate that from your day, you have hours, yeah. hours that you didn't have before. We spend hours going, I need to get that done. Now I got to do that. And I don't know how, when am I going to do that? And how am I going to do that? And I probably won't do that good. And yeah. hours we spend doing that. It's like we're doing the job five or six or seven or a hundred times before we even do the job. Then we're wiped out. That is exhausting. You eliminate that from your day. It's like you can't believe the open space you have yeah. and how much happier and lighter you feel. It's, it's like we're living in a frenzy, right? We're just like, <laughs> you know, just kind of all over the place. And just the, I think our thoughts can take up so much mental space, yeah. leaving very little for productivity and actually getting things done because we're constantly in our own head about what has not got done or even just living like next week. What do I have to do next week or next month? Or kind of looking at our calendar as a whole. I know for me, has overwhelmed me at times. But so... So in the case that we are overworked, we're exhausted, um, don't have much space in our lives because our calendars are just full, something that, you know, when we, our, our last conversation, we were talking about that, that happy hack that works every time. What is that? So can you talk to us a little bit about what we can do when we're feeling so overwhelmed, exhausted, and just mental cloudiness because we're just stuck in the to-dos and yeah you know after yeah. after interviewing people for 20 years and seeing who recovers from problems in their life and who gets stuck in there i started to notice and myself too is the people that took a pause and were had to pause to celebrate the things that they do their lives were so much easier yeah. right so if they took a pause of even if i remember when my babies and, uh, you know, if you have, when you have babies, your arms are full all day and like you can't get the house or you just stare at it as you're carrying your baby around crying, you're staring at the mess. And so if I unloaded the dishwasher, like I just sat back and said, I did that. You know, it's just a moment. Like it doesn't take any extra time. And truthfully, it gives you so much energy. It's worth the moment, but you take a minute. And so when I say celebrated, it, it just means you take a moment and say, that's done. And you kind of look at it. That's it. That's what I call celebrating what you do. And, and to enforce this and to build this habit of celebrating what you do, I have people in the evening write down three things that they did that day, that, they're, um, that they accomplished, three successes of the day. Because we don't know, we are right on, when we finish something, we are right on to the next thing and thinking all the stuff we didn't get done. We never take a moment. And what happens is we're not connecting with our skills and abilities. We're not connecting to um, trusting ourselves as a person to get through stuff because all we see is our deficits all the time. And all of a sudden it's like, I can't trust myself. I can't get anything done. I don't know how to do this. And then to put anxiety and fear and all that stuff, just really overwhelm. I was talking, I had a group this morning, a, a coaching group this morning, and people were talking about their forearms being tense because we, <laughs> we did our whole body is tensed. Yeah. And so if we take a moment to celebrate, it invigorates us. It's so acknowledging. It lifts us up. It lifts up our spirit. And we begin to build that trust in ourselves that we are so needed in the world because when we trust ourselves like it's like bring it on yeah. no matter what you're not worried anymore it's like whatever happens i can handle it most things aren't bad so you know i'm not saying you're going to bring bad stuff in your life you're going to bring only good we worry about a lot of stuff that never happens what a waste yeah i absolutely true and i know for, for me especially wasting that time thinking of, or just sitting in that overwhelm and for me, I overwhelm myself so much when it's unnecessary. Unnecessary. What a waste of time. Yeah. Oh, I love that. And that's something I'm actually going to have to go back and listen to this conversation for my own self. Woo! Good. So, I think that one of the problems that many people struggle with is that they have a big vision for their work. They have extremely high expectations um, for their business and their families and their lives and the way they show up as a woman or a mother. And I think that that we're using that as a barometer to have to reach that level. And when we feel like we don't in a day, that's where I know for me, I have felt like maybe I wasted my, my time that day or I didn't fulfill my highest potential. But something that you're saying is, Hey, if you just did this or that, or, you know, even if it's just two things that you were able to do small things, it's still worth celebrating because we got up, we made a move, right? We put some intention into something and something exactly. that I 
Most yeah. of our expectations are too high anyway, and that's where all the judgment comes in. And so, first of all, we have to have some realistic expectations. Yes, I'm totally, I always have my list in the morning, what I want to accomplish that day. And there's more on it than I know I'm going to do that day. And so it's really a couple day list for me. And I don't stress about it because I know you have to really, I really made peace with this belief that there is more than enough time for everything that we want to do. There's more than enough time for everything we want to do. Like we prioritize our time and we, if we want something, we get it done or we make an excuse. Right. right. And so, um, so I never worried about getting stuff done because it's always going to get done. Uh, and then, you know, at the end of the day, if you celebrate those few things that you did do, man, you are going to be pumped and ready and hit the ground running tomorrow. Or if you celebrate the morning, you'll be ready and hit the ground running this afternoon. The difference is the energy that you have to go forward and do more. And that's why it increases your productivity. Yeah. It's, so celebrating those small things actually really does feed us in a way. I love how you brought up, you just approach things with more energy, right? Instead of negative talking to ourselves and why didn't you Exhausting. do this? Yeah, you should have done this. And I think many people don't realize how many negative conversations that we have in our head about, like you said, what we didn't do, what we still have to get done. And I agree, it takes up. It's so normal. Space. It is so normal. And we think it's true. And so we don't really challenge it too much. It's so like rote in us, ingrained in there to do that. And so we don't even notice we're doing it and we don't notice how bad it's affecting us. And so once we could see it and realize it, like if I'm working with somebody and I could help them see these, because this is one of our biggest obstacles and barriers to our career, our relationships, everything, our happiness. And so when I help people see that, then they can recognize it now. And man, it makes all the difference in the world. It's like, someone's just got to, I love this story. Like, so, you know, in, in, um, when Westerners came to the New World, you know, um, the Americas, um, the Native peoples were, um, couldn't see the ships because it was so out of the reality. Mm. It wasn't until the shaman went and touched the side of the ship that the people could see that there was a ship there. And, and I, it helps me so much to say, it's like, if it's not in your reality, it's so hard to see. Mm. And so once we see it's there, then we could do something about it, get rid of it, acknowledge it. Uh, stop treating ourselves. We never. We wouldn't treat a best friend this way. We wouldn't treat an enemy this bad. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I. I always love to say um, that you want to have uh, compassion for yourself, right? And you want to talk to yourself as if you would a friend. So would I really verbally abuse my friend, saying, "How come you didn't get that done?" I mean, why are you so slow? What's wrong with you? Get on it. You know, I expect you to be better than that. And I think that over the years, I've done a good job at practicing self-compassion and um, really just but like this conversation is about celebrating the small things. And I think with that, when you take the time to do that in each day, you really do start to pick up a momentum and it just kind of becomes like a snowball effect that the more good energy you put into it, just bringing attention to what you have got done instead of looking at it from a deficit or negative mindset. I think it just does a lot for our businesses, our relationships and um, productivity and, and just it yeah. will effect throughout every area of our lives, I believe. And, and I'm not saying like that you need to be more productive. That's not even it. It's like, this makes you happier. It makes you happier because it, it, you know, they, that's a secondary thing that you're more productive. That's a, that's just an extra bonus because that's not really the important thing. The important thing is like being, trusting yourself, liking yourself enough, having compassion for yourself because then you're going to shine everywhere. You're going to affect the people around you in good ways. They're going to reflect back that goodness to you. Like your whole spirit is lifted. Your life is calmer and happier, much clearer. Right when you go out to the woods, I mean, I walk outside every day, even through the winter. I'm in upstate New York, so it's cold. But um, but I make a point to do that because I, our bodies, really, our nervous system needs that reset and that recharge and that bathing. You know, a lot of cultures do that on purpose to relieve their stress. Yeah. Um, and it, it's really important for for our overall happiness to, to celebrate those things and stop that negative self critic. That's probably the most pain and suffering we have is that negative self-critic in our mind. Mm, yeah, I believe that to be true. Yes. So, um, so we talked about celebrating the little accomplishments or the little things that we do on a day. 
on a daily basis. So that's one aspect of it. And then another um, challenge I see many people struggle with is that they have wins in life, maybe milestones, and they kind of skip over that stuff. And something that I've been fascinated with is celebrating milestones and celebrating wins in life. So not so much just things on a daily basis, like, oh, I've got this done, I was able to get this call or this interview done, or that you know client had a result. But more on a larger scale, I see many people experiencing good things in their life, but sometimes they feel like, oh, it's not big enough to celebrate yet. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Absolutely. I mean, I call these definitional ceremonies because they, they're ceremonies that define us. So the, each of these steps are really important. They do define us. Actually, every experience we have changes us, right? And, and if we, we could take the negative and bring down, and that affects our identity, right? We think negatively about ourselves. Um, or we could take our identity and think about the good parts of our identity. We always have multiple stories about ourselves, but the stories that we love people and we're connected and we care, those are identities that we prefer. So when something happens that um, is an accomplishment that goes along with those things that you value a lot, if you celebrate it somehow, I mean, it could be as nice as just putting a candle at the dinner table and like having a very special dinner. You don't have to spend money to do it. It could be going out to dinner. I mean, it, or it could be having people over and having a birthday party. I mean, all of these things are definitional ceremonies that we celebrate ourselves. It could be little, it could be big. It could be a, uh, someone gives you an award and you go to the whole award ceremony, your friends come and, um, you know, there could be different levels of it. In therapy, a lot of times we'd have, you know, the child who's gotten over his problem, doesn't have anxiety anymore, and the teacher sometimes comes and the parents come and maybe aunts and uncles or grandparents, and we have food and we deliver like a certificate to the child for that accomplishment. And that is, it, that ritual makes more meaning mm -hmm. around the change and helps sustain that change. So if we make that commitment or we do give something or we uh, have some kind of intention, if we have some kind of ritual or ceremony around it, it, it helps our brain really make meaning around it and sustain that way of being. Really important. I, I really highly believe in it. And so I'm doing that in miniature in my day, like celebrating the dishwasher or I got those calls done. I'm doing it in many ways, but then you could, yes, it's really important to do it in big ways, but people are so, uh, want to be so humble and humility is good to point when it's not when it's against yourself and it's, it, you know, sometimes it, humility is awesome. Yeah. But sometimes people confuse humility with low self-worth and that's not really the same thing. <laughs> oh, I love that. that. That's a whole nother conversation that we can that we can like dive into because people need to know how to tell the difference. So when to highlight things, when to be humble. And I think most of us are humble more than we want to give ourselves that credit and to celebrate. So yeah, I honestly, that is really on topic for what we're talking about. Yeah. But, but something that you mentioned right now is you just started to explain the power in celebrating things. You just said beautifully exactly what my family has been doing for years. And so on my mom's side, we are notorious for celebrating the little things. And it's funny because when I tell people, oh, you know, my family, we're having a party for X, Y, and Z. And they're like, what? Like you guys are having a party in and we party all the time. And yeah. for example, like if someone gets a new job, someone gets a promotion, if someone bought a new car. I remember launching my website. We had a party. Um, when I got my first client online, we had a party with cake and ice cream and music and food. And there was like money all over the place to just kind of signify like, okay, I'm making money, you know? And so I think that when people hear little things that, you know, my family celebrates, it's just like, wow, you guys find any excuse. And someone has said that you guys find any excuse for cake and ice cream and food. And I'm just like, you know what, for, for some reason, it's just, I, it's how I grew up. Anytime something happens. That's why you're so happy. Yeah. That's I'm, why you are such a happy person. And let's just take that right now that it is happiness is a choice and we could do it. And the more ceremony you have, the happier that you are. And that's why you are, so you are a light. And you're so beautiful and you're so like, you. you can feel your energy and it's because of that. It, that is why. It's so easy, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is. And you and know, fun. It is, and fun. <laughs> and fun, right? And I, and I think that for, for those of you watching, if you can't imagine having like 
a big party for maybe like something that you've launched or something that you've done. It doesn't have to be big. I'm just saying that my family has definitely taken it overboard and we're more of the extreme, but it is fun. Any time to get together. You guys are going to live long and be yeah. happy. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Um, so just on that topic of just celebrating things and bringing people together. And I was talking to Ray, my man, we were talking about celebrating. I said, you know what? I've got my first Bloom TV interview down. Now it's not put together, but I just had my very first interview. And I said, we need to celebrate. And he's like, uh, maybe you should wait till you put the intro and you know, you put it out into the world. And I said, yeah, that's good. But I still want to celebrate. And he's like, okay, whatever, you know, but, um, yeah, it's the little things that, that make a big difference. And I, and I truly do believe that when you take that time, whether it's on a bigger scale, medium scale, or just loading the dishwasher, right? I think taking that time to slow down and say, you know what, I did that. It gives us so much more energy and momentum and it allows us to move forward in a positive mindset instead of that negative space where we're constantly talking, you know, down on ourselves or beating ourselves up for what we didn't get done. So yeah, I just, I can go on and on about this conversation because it's something, it's something that I've realized that I've done my entire life. And I didn't realize that I was doing it or the benefit that it was having until I just started to get more versed in personal development and what it means to really live a joyful, happy, fulfilling life. And I, I do agree a big part of that is slowing down and looking at those milestones and really celebrating for what, what you've accomplished. So yeah, thank you for saying that in such a beautiful Amen. Thank you. Yes. Um, so we talked about um, the idea of having to sell, celebrating each day, the little things. What are some things that you've done? Um, you talked about going for a walk and stuff. So I guess you did mention that, but what are some things that people can do? They're really busy. They've got a lot going on to do list and they're having a hard time slowing down and taking that moment, what, what are some little things that, that um, you think would be a good thing to implement in maybe a day? Well, I mean, there's a lot of chatter nowadays about this morning routine and it is so, I mean, you know, the, the, the happiest people have a very defined morning routine. You know, they, they hydrate, yeah. um, they, they don't get on their phone right away, right? They don't get caught in the news and the crazy or the email or anyone else's agenda. They take a moment to sit with that water and, um, and have like human thoughts and having grateful thoughts. I was just listening to this uh, podcast and it's talking about happiness in Bali and how often they do ceremonies. So I was going to tell you about that. But um, they, there's, this, there's a gratitude piece of it. Mm. Like when you have ceremony all day or when you take this moment, you're grateful for yourself, but you're also grateful kind of for the universe or for spirit or whatever. And that gratitude, taking some time to have that gratitude uh, for yourself and everything around. Now, I don't feel like that's different, yourself and everything. I mean, we're, I feel like we're one. So gratitude for yourself and gratitude for the universe is the same to me. But having that time for gratitude and having that time to celebrate, um, hydrating first thing, walking outside, getting outside as much as you possibly can, or if you can't, if you know you have any leg walking issues, you know, you can drive with the window down or go outside to eat for five minutes right outside your door. It doesn't matter. I have lots of plants in your house. I have tons of plants in yeah, my house. I see them. Um, I see them in the background. Yeah. So I, uh, yeah, so that's, that, that's really important to me to be really connected with nature, even in a cold winter. But um, yeah, so I think those are like non-negotiables in your day, but, in, but truly the flexibility, you know, sometimes as a mom, if my daughter got up early and I was doing my water and thinking and writing my journal, of course she'd come over and I'd open it. She's 14. She's big, but she's taller than me, but yeah. it's okay. I still forget, put that down. I open my arms and she comes in and her little head here and I rock in the chair and just breathe with her. And so I am flexible, but it's still non-negotiable because I have the time. Yeah. Myself, you know. Yeah. So I love that. And so since while you brought up the um, morning routine, something that I do most mornings is the five minute journal. And that's made a huge difference in my life. And just inside, you know, you start off with the three things you're grateful for, which always kind of centers me and has me, you know, thinking about just the small things. And it doesn't even have to be, oh, you know, my house or just 
you know, my internet connection, but just the little things like just the sunshine coming into my window, um, something that I appreciate. And um, another question is what would make today great? So it's just a way for me to write down what I'm grateful for, what would make today great. So when I actually step into my day, I already know at the end of the day, what would be amazing. And then at the end of it, at night, there's a portion where you can write three amazing things that happened that day. So I think you touched on a very important thing, uh, gratitude. And when we do take the time out and celebrating those little things, what that really is, is gratitude. Yes, but this is particular because it's gratitude for yourself. So we can have what amazing things happen. We can say, I saw a good sunset. That's great to have that gratitude for that. I would do both. I do three gratitude things that it could be anything could happen to you. But I really want people to write down three things that they did. Ooh, yeah. I, I love because, how you distinguish that yeah. because yeah. even me too, when I think about what I write, and I, that's why I love I have a history of, of this, you know, yeah. it goes back six months. But I'm sure that if I were to go in my journal and look back, I'm positive 80% is going to be something that's outside of myself. Right. And, and that's great. It's still, it's still affects people in positive ways they've done research and that gratitude is very very important it can totally transform your life but if you add these extra three things that you did i mean i don't think they've done studies i'm just trying to spread the word because it's so it, it really transforms like in a in a much more much higher level much higher level because now you're in touch with your skills and abilities. And so anxiety is going to go down. I mean, that's, what, that's why anxiety is so rampant in our culture is because people just aren't connected with their skills yeah. because we're so busy seeing all our deficits and what we didn't get and all our standards are so high. And so we fail at everything, you know, <laughs> and so we hate, we don't like ourselves and, and that's, that's causing, that's why anxiety is so high. Yeah. So for someone who's struggling to slow down still, even after this conversation, they're like, you know what, Jody, I see, I hear you, but my day is full and just the thought of doing it and actually having a practice for it. What would you tell someone who's, who's struggling to actually take some steps to implement? What are some big benefits that, that you believe that they would see if they took that time for themselves, even if it's three minutes? What, what, I what think self-esteem would go up. I think self-esteem would raise. You know, the sense of self. When you commit to something, even if it's two minutes a day, and you do it every day, you're going to begin to trust yourself and your self-esteem is going to go up. So just the act of doing it, not even, and then you do it, it's doubled. But that, that is a way that, it's, uh, that if we, our self-esteem is down, the number one thing to do is uh, make a commitment to do something every day. It could be for five minutes, three minutes, whatever it is, and do it every day. And after a few weeks, your self-esteem will go up. And so that's really important. Uh, but I was thinking, too, as you said that, like, of course, they could work with me, right, at my, jodyamon.com if they wanted to. But I, I was thinking about my daughter coming to me in the morning just needing that cuddle, like, you know, people are like, it's so overwhelmed. They're hearing this conversation. I'm just like, come on. Come, <laughs> come over here. <laughs> I just want to rock them a little bit in the morning. Doesn't that feel good, actually? Sometimes I just want to be rocked yeah. by some maternal figure that just wants to love me and yeah. see the good in me, right? Yes. But, um, I, I think sometimes we just need something like that. Yeah. <laughs> I love I love that. Thank you touch. so, yeah. Thank you so, yeah, touch, right? Thank touch. you so much. Give for a massage. Yeah, thank you. I, I think we had a, such a beautiful conversation. And although it, it is simple, it's deceivingly simple because it is so hard to slow down in this day and age when we're connected to everything and everyone and our phones are getting pinged and, you know, everyone has access to us. And this is and our self worth is so wrapped up in it all. Yeah. Yeah, and I think this is something simple that people can do, even if it's, it doesn't cost you any money. It costs you in a little bit of time, but the payout is, it's unmatched, right? It if you is. give a few minutes, it gives you an hour. And I love the fact that the last time we talked, you talked about the idea of how when we do these things, it actually expands time. It expands time. It gives us so much, we, we, we have so much more space in the day when we get rid of that inner critic. It expands our time. 
Yeah. And that's just beautiful. And it's really because we're in the present moment a lot more. And in the present moment, that's where all healing is done. You don't heal in the past and the future. You only heal in the present. And so the more you're in the present, the more healed you'll get and be and feel. And, and so we want to expand that time in the present moment like that. And it's just, it just benefits us in all ways. Yeah. Jody, thank you again for having this conversation with me today. Thank you so much. I'm yeah. so glad to be here. Yes. Awesome. So I would love to hear from you. Let's continue this discussion. Head over to noellebloom.com and leave a comment. Let us know what do you struggle with in your daily life as it pertains to slowing down and actually taking the time to celebrate the little things that you accomplish. Did you get something from this conversation? What is your biggest insight that you've learned? Something that I've said or Jody has said about celebrating those small wins, having those small ceremonies, and really taking time to think about your morning routine. So I'd love to hear from you. If you like this video, please subscribe and share it with your friends. Thank you so much for watching. As you're out there making a difference in the world, remember to have fun, live free, and feel fabulous. I'll see you next time on Bloom TV. Bye. Are you on the VIP list? If not, you're missing out. Head to noellebloom.com now and sign up to get free exclusive content to help you create a business and live fabulously.